Hello, my lovelies. I'm Denny O, oh, the author with no last name. I'm also a dev editor, fashion designer, and game dev. And one thing I've learned from being an author, development editor, and fashion designer is branding. Today, I want to talk about the brand of another game. My last two videos that involve branding, SSO, The Real Problem, and Dream World, have been a bit negative. SSO being an example of a muddled brand that doesn't know what it wants to be after three management teams and ten years of development. Man, that's some development hell. That still doesn't have a complete game. And Dreamworld. Well, they had no identity or brand at all. But I want to talk about something positive, something that we can use as a good example of branding. Yes, I want to talk about Palea! Palea is actually the first MMO I've been excited about in a while. And due to all the other MMOs out there, I had a hard minute wrapping my head around the game itself, until I realized that it was other people calling it Epic Fantasy and not Singularity 6 themselves. So, according to Singularity 6, Palea is a cozy world high fantasy community sim MMO. It's supposed to be Animal Crossing meets Stardew Valley as an MMO. Okay, all my background stills are from the trailer they put up through IGN. Please just put up with it. Sorry. <laughs> there is only 1 minute 55 seconds. And anything else is mostly from their website or images they've released. The story of the game they've teased is that humans disappeared for a long time and now have only returned. You're one of the returning humans. Though if I can be the purple whatever it is, I will be down for it. I love purple. And it's your mission to restart human civilization among the other people in this secondary world and discover the mystery of why humans disappeared. Or something like that. Let's talk about the genius then of the name Palea. There are two ways you could pronounce this, and I'm not sure which is right. Palea, as in paleontology, which is the study of fossils, or Palea, as in pal. You're my friend and come let's pal around. It's kind of like knowing the word Camaro came from camaraderie. Chevy wanted a word that sounded friendly. It's a community sim you can play with your friends as you search for the past with or without fossils. Yes, I don't know if that is what they meant to do, but hey, that's what they did and I am here for it. It's short, simple to remember, friendly sounding, and conveys the core ideas of the game. Five letters. The logo has flowers growing out of it like it's a tree trunk or flowers growing among the tree roots of the pea. Flowers are peaceful. They're worked into the font of the logo organically. The logo is still relatively simple and will look good at different sizes. The colors they are using are French type blue, a deep purple probably to represent the enchanting part of it, and the elf like people. And then they have a deep aqua and a dark green. These are for the most part very natural and earthy colors, blue for the sky, green for the leaves, and aqua is water maybe, and is pretty gender neutral. Purple is magic and mysticism and mystery and sometimes violence. Purple is very common for fantasy. These colors are all very calming. There's nothing bright or garish about them. So I'd expect some farming and magic or at least alchemy and maybe hunting. Well, I don't know about the combat all and the logo or the name. It's too pretty for it. But this is from people who worked at Blizzard and Riot, so I'm going to assume there is going to be combat somewhere. They've said they're going to have optional combat. Ugh, as long as it's optional, I guess. The logo doesn't convey it, though. The logo conveys a peaceful, farming-style game. Nice and calm. When you Google Palea, no one else has used it, so you're going to get this game. Now, what is high fantasy versus epic fantasy, and aren't they one and the same? Yes and no. Palea counts as high fantasy because it's set in a secondary world. Now, the original definition of epic fantasy is something that's grand in scope, be it the plot or the characters. However, in the gameplay and movie landscape, epic fantasy is now one very specific thing. 
Lord of the Rings and all of the knockoffs, Dungeons and Dragons, World of Warcraft. It's a secondary world set in a fantasy Western Europe with the corresponding time architecture and look, ranging at the latest the Tudor era with mud daub and timber housing. Epic fantasy has very specific character classes and races. It is something the West is having a very hard time letting go of, especially in the MMO genre. Palea is not epic fantasy. It's high fantasy, but visually it is an epic fantasy. What it is, is cozy modern fantasy. And that's why it took me a second to wrap my head around it because, oh my god, we are not used to cozy and modern and fantasy all together in one branding demo. And if you're going, Ginny, I watched the trailer and they have timber framing with stucco rolls, you're right, they do. It's the execution that makes all the difference. Okay, I have this image from Meta Picture that I had to Google reverse search to find it, and it's of a very specific house in the city of Zakopane in South Poland. Zakopane is known for its timber housing and escape slope. And this particular house is a modern rendition of the Zakopane timber house style. Okay, it looks like someone made a human sized house for a hobbit. This modern Zakopane house is what the houses and buildings in Palea remind me of. Did they see this picture and go, let's make our housing this way? I have no idea. I just have way too many pictures on my hard drive. Because this is a community sim MMO, which means more gardening and mining and timber carting and fishing type of thing, the target market is a lot different than your usual 18 to 24 year old male demographic. They are going for a far more casual game style player one who loves customization and story and isn't really in the game for the combat. I'm not going to 100% say this is women, but this is also women. Because there are men who play Animal Crossing and Stardew Valley too and enjoy those types of games. When it comes to grabbing the female demographic, which is kind of telling they decided to use a woman player character to introduce the game, there is a certain style of graphics that appeal to them more than others. Or rather, there is a certain shape. The circle. Look at any product made for women, or something that's trying to be more gender neutral, like the Mini Cooper, you're going to notice a lot of curves. The cars of the 1930s were more gender neutral than cars of today, for instance, with their big round real wells. In games that are primarily fantasy games, like this ever merged game from Big Fish, they have a tendency to go for the bright, very candy colors, often pink or purple, if they want girls, and they round out the roofs of the buildings. Round things are considered softer and more approachable. And at the same time, notice Paleo's color palette isn't pastels or primary colors. They are using tones and shades and tints instead. They are not going for a younger, almost childlike demographic. They want an older demo who appreciates a more sophisticated color scheme. The more bright and primary and almost candy your colors are, most often the younger the demographic you're trying to appeal to. Round is cozy. Textures are cozy. Plants are cozy. Cozy is something that can be very large but feels very small. It's warm. It's comfortable. You aren't stepping into the great unknown and feeling fear. It's a knitted blanket, a cup of cocoa, and your favorite book in a stuffed armchair in front of the fireplace when it's raining outside. Cozy. This game feels cozy. And at the same time, it feels modern. There isn't a 100% culture influence in the dress, and it's not epic fantasy medieval MMO. There is very obvious modern styling details. Tailoring, for instance, trousers, big lapels, trench coats. They are using elements of clothing we associate with different types of fantasy from piracy to gas lamp to medieval in modern ways. For instance, I've seen a kimono style tunic, a hat cape, tailored vest, billowy shirts, Ascot neck with wear, but it's all very modern in style and in detail, which is good. This makes it stand apart from other MMOs. It's not all armor sets all the time. The clothes look fun without being catalog, aka ripped out of a modern LL Bean, and they look like they're meant to go adventuring or do hard work in. Just allow me to choose the colors and I'll be happy. 
I'm not sure where the technology level is at. There are windmills, but there is also a robot who is also very round. And I've seen at least one character art with cybernetic limb, I guess. This fits in with the idea that humans died and the world and technology went on without them. I'd have to see more to really know what's going on here. Maybe it's run by magic, or maybe they use technology for some things and not other things. I mean, I saw a fridge, but a wood stove slash oven, so we'll just have to see. The pictures of the land shows green hills, young, sharp-looking mountains, all in this Breath of the Wild style, I guess. It's all very pretty and very cozy looking. There are plenty of flowers to make it pretty, too. Is it really that different from other worlds and MMOs? Probably not. But if you're doing, this is a deer, this is a fox, and this is a wolf, then yeah, there's only so much you can do. It's pretty much the type of world we expect from an MMO, and that's not a bad thing. You can usually only push something so far in a particular direction before you lose your audience. The science fiction western has been having this problem for years. Take the robot design, for instance. It reminds me of a lot of different robot designs, like, okay, there's the Iron Giant, the robot from Meet the Robinsons in there. There's a bit of the look of the wizards from Final Fantasy with round glowing eyes, hat. It's not extremely out there robot design. It's very comfortable. I'm not even sure I'd call it distinctive. It's going to remind players of robots or other character designs they've seen and liked, and it won't, most importantly, alienate them away from the game. They'll think, oh, it's cute. It's really important when you're stepping into essentially a new style of game not to alienate your players. There is a fine line between something new and exciting and we've gone too far, no one wants to play this game, it makes them uncomfortable, and when your brand is cozy, cozy is the opposite of uncomfortable. The visuals look a little plastic to me, like PS3 level graphics. The characters though seem to be animated really well. Animation can really make up for plastic textures. It's really important to have good animations, especially on the faces, because it allows players to empathize with them more, and making sure the textures reflect the light in the proper way, aka not everything is shiny. They don't seem to have that problem like Ratchet and Clank Future did, so someone has figured it out. Now, the fantasy tagline right now is, Cozy World Made For You, which is fine because Cozy is not exactly a brand concept most game designers are going after. It's still a basic explore the world type of fantasy tagline, so we'll see if there is more later on when they start to reveal more of the story. I can't call it a Cozy mystery because that's actually a very specific type of genre, so we'll see. Now this preview is a really good start and great first impression for a brand new MMO that's slightly different MMO style than other MMOs. They are going for a different demographic, a different play style, and as such they've come up with a different visual style to set them apart from everyone else. This means they aren't trying to cannibalize the WoW, Guild Wars 2, ESO, insert random combat PvP slash PvE MMO here, player base because they are looking for players who are in an underserved or unserved market. Palea versus a lot of other MMOs I've glanced at passionately come out in the next few years gives me hope there is a market out there for MMOs that don't fit the classic MMO combat PvE and PvP mold. I know there is a market. Star Stable Online proved there is a market for it. As much as the brand for their game bugs me. But here's another game trying for a similar market, and whether or not it succeeds or fails will be further proof of concept and more incentive for game developers to try and make more games, be they single player like Stardew Valley, or cooperatives like Animal Crossing, or now MMORPGs like Palea to cater to the more casual lore and story leaning players. Like books, not every game should cater to the same set of players. One, because that gets old and boring. Two, because there are only so many players in that set. So the more competition you have, the less likely your game, especially if it's an MMO of any sort, be RPG or Battle Arena, is to succeed as those players hop from game to game and aren't satisfied with any of them. I know this video is a lot shorter than my other videos. It's a lot easier to point out when a brand is doing something right versus when a brand is doing something baffling. I'm going to try for one game brand video a month. 
It depends on the games. It depends on how well things are going with me. We'll see. I hope you enjoyed listening to me. Thanks for sticking around. Take care of yourselves, my lovelies. Bless, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video.